Welcome to a special edition of Victory TV. My name is Michael Zapponi and I'm joined by the new head coach of the Melbourne Victory Football Club, Grant Brebner. Brebs, congratulations. Thank you, Michael. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it's been a, a really proud day for me today. Um, a fantastic day for me and my family and uh, really looking forward to the challenge ahead. Your uh, family's uh, Alfie, uh, Clyde, Amelia at home. Uh, they must be proud as punch. Yes, of course. Um, you know, they've... they've uh, been fully aware of what this club means to me um, and uh, you know they were equally as happy as myself when when I found out that I was I've given was given the opportunity um, to take control of the club um, so yeah a fantastic uh, moment for me and my family. Marion uh, mum and Ian dad at home too been long uh, t t time supporters of Melbourne Victory and uh, and your career as well no doubt. Yeah look the obviously yes I mean it's it's not just as a, a coach um, you know I came here in 2006 as a player Michael um, and initially I thought I was coming for a year um, but just you know my mum and dad have been huge supporters of my career and um, you know equally getting up in the middle of the night to watch games for this fantastic club and uh, you know they'll have a tear in their eye this morning knowing that the Suns head coach. It's been a whirlwind the last uh, few weeks talk us through um, did you think you'd be sitting here today being announced as the head coach of the Melbourne Victory Football Club when you were asked to take over on an interim basis? Yeah look in all honesty no um, not not at the outset um, you know it was uh, it was kind of an opportunity that was given and it was put in front of me, Michael, and, and of course I wanted to accept. Um, you know, to be able to be an interim coach of this football club would, was a huge honour in itself. Um, and then during the process, um, you know, being head coach, um, I absolutely loved it. Um, you know, yes, we, we had some challenges with uh, up in Sydney, um, but, you know, every moment of it, uh, even during the results, um, was was just a fantastic um, time for me to be in this position. And uh, when I came back and the dust settled, um, mm. there was no question that uh, I, thought, I thought I was ready for this role and, uh, and I thought I could find solutions to take this club back to where it needs to be. You don't have any f coaching experience at the senior level, apart from the last four or five games. Uh, it's a huge step up. Uh, to, to move into this role at a, at a huge football club. Uh, is that something that, that, that you had to think about carefully? Uh, of course it, it crossed my mind, but, um, you know, there, even, even with the inexperience, Michael, there, there's an eagerness and, and a desire and a want to do well. Um, yes, you know, there, there is going to be um, probably talked about that there, there is inexperience, but, you know, that won't stop me working harder than anybody else. Um, I will be the hardest working person at this football club, along with the people that are going to support me. Um, I will bring in the right person. Um, it's already started, uh, the process of looking for somebody to assist me. Um, and that person will be, you know, will have a wealth of knowledge. Um, they will support me, they will help me and they will guide me. Um, so, you know, we'll be in a good position. Tell us a little bit about your philosophy. We saw a little bit of it uh, yep. with uh, the last five games of Melbourne Victory. Uh, we saw a lot of youngsters come through and you gave them the opportunity because you'd worked with them before. But a club like this can't be built just on youngsters. We, uh, I think everybody watching knows that. So what are you expecting uh, in your first season? Yeah, look, uh, in terms of philosophy, Michael, it's, um, it's the club philosophy. And I've, I've said that from the outset. Um, as a player, I knew one way, and that was to attack. Um, be, try to be as entertaining as we can for the fans' benefit because that's what they've come to know and expect from this football club. And, you know, that was certainly from day one my coaching mantra, um, what this club's known. And, you know, I've tried to instill that in the playing group. You mentioned that we have a lot of youth. Um, we do. Um, but youth to me was just a, a number. Um, you know, those players I looked at as first-team players. Um, and every time we went into a game, whether it was the youth or the experience, um, you know, there was a benchmark and a standard that we expected. And all I wanted to do was give them, you know, a, a confidence and, and no fear that they could go out and produce. And yes, look, while some of the results didn't go the way we wanted, we saw that this club can produce some fantastic footballers uh, in the youth space and get some players of a senior ilk that would help them and guide them through. Tell us a little bit about uh, the expectations that you have on, on yourself and on the team. Uh, the team will, will change a lot over yes. the next few months. Yes. You'll, you'll recruit players. Has the board uh, given you an objective in your first season, second season at the club? Because it's a big club, a club that expects success. Yeah, and, and along with that, you know, I accept the challenge that um, we're, what 
we've seen this year has been unacceptable. And, and that's my viewpoint. And, you know, for us to, to finish in the position we did, um, it's, it's not comfortable. It's not a, a feeling that I like. So, you know, we know where we need to be. Nobody needs to tell me, Michael, where we need to be as a football club. Um, the chairman, uh, the CEO, yes, we all know that this club needs to be challenging for trophies. Um, and of course, you know, we will be looking to do that this season um, when we start again. So I don't need anybody to tell me. I will drive myself. I will make sure that that's my priority. And everybody around me and the playing group will know that that's where we need to be. Recruitment. Um, a birdie tells me that you're already on the phone <laughs> early this morning uh, looking at players. How quickly uh, are you looking to do that? Um, look, we've been active in terms of looking at players for a number of weeks now. Um, of course, the, there's a database that we've been building. Um, the club have, have put in place a football committee where we will go through, we will analyse, we will look at players. And, and that's how it has to be, Michael. Um, of course, when it comes to the decision, um, that will be my decision and who comes to the football club. I know what we need. Um, again, part of you know thinking about how, you know, what I wanted to do in this role and, and was I ready for it um, was, you know, I wanted to take that real ownership because I've lived it and I've breathed it for the last two months and I know what we need. So, you know, we need a, a certain type of player. Of course, we need good footballers, but we need leaders. We need, you know, a presence and we need players that, you know, are, are going to show a level of, a level of passion, you know, that will, will when we're playing football, that their fans will come to know and expect and what they've been used to. You won two championships as a player, two premierships as a player, with, with Melbourne victory as well. The, the pressure as a player, I'd imagine, is very different and, and, uh, when you're coaching the football club. Have you had a taste of that? Are you starting to sense what that's going to be like as, as the head coach? Yeah, yeah, and I fully expect it to be different to, you know, what we faced up in Sydney because, obviously, there was only the one game where we had crowds. Um, but... You know, in any job, you know, there's, there's going to be pressure. I welcome the pressure at this football club because it will be what it gets me out of bed every morning. And if there wasn't the pressure, you know, it, it would probably put me in a comfort zone. Um, so I will strive every morning to make sure that, you know, we are building this club back to where it needs to be. And like I said in the interim role, you know, I wanted to put some blocks in place. Um, you know, the players have bought into that, Michael. I, I, I've got to say, my, my dealings with the players over the last few months have been fantastic. They really have, and I think everybody's seen the, the, the change in the group and, and the way that they've really embraced what we've asked of them. So we will, we will make sure that um, we're building on what we've already done and um, making sure that, uh, you know, the players and everybody else involved with the club are... Uh, in this club, as, as I said. You've got, a, you've got a long relationship with the, the club, uh, obviously, and Melbourne Victory supporters know your history. A as a coach, will you lean on mentors? Do you have people you talk to? You know, you, you're just the second player at Melbourne Victory to become a coach. Obviously, Kevin Musket being the first. Yeah, I think you have to. I think you have to. Um, I think it's part of evolving that um, you constantly have conversations with, with people that are in the, the, the club and people that are external from the club. Um, of course, it's not going to just be my opinion. I, I will constantly um, ask for advice and, and constantly be, you know, looking to others to, to ask questions. But um, like I said, I, uh, I'm the head coach of this football club and, um, you know, my vision is clear. The club's vision is clear and um, we need to implement that. Champions League, very quickly, uh, there's suggestion that that may still go ahead, um, the Asian Champions League, which puts a little bit more pressure on you to... Yep get uh, players ready for that as soon as perhaps October? Yeah, look, it does, it does place a, a little bit of an immediate urgency on getting players in. Um, but like I said, we've already started that process, Michael. So um, we, we want to make sure that the players are right. You know, we're not just going to sign players just because it's the Champions League. Um, you know, if, if we have one or two names that we still need to fill, or spots, sorry, that we still need to fill, then we'll take our time. One thing we won't do is be rushed into making signings. Um, we will, as I said, you know, make announcements at the right time and once we have made sure that the players are the right fit. Um, but yes, the, the Champions League we're looking forward to and uh, if it happens, it'll be fantastic. Very loyal uh, fan base and membership base, but they will expect some success. You said that uh, you will 
uh, you know that expectation that you have to be challenging for trophies. So what's your message to the to the victory fans? Um, yeah, look, as it's always been um, to our members and fans, Michael, they have they have been our twelfth man now for for fifteen years, and uh, you know they are they've been with us with us through thick and thin. Um, it's been a difficult, challenging year for them, um, but they know now that uh, you know we'll be working extremely hard um, to make sure that this club. Um, you know, starts getting back to where it needs to be because, you know, I want to see a lot of smiles on our fans' faces. And, um, you know, while I can't guarantee results, what I can guarantee is that they will have 11 players on the football park that are pulling their weight every single week trying to get this club back to where it needs to be. Thanks for joining us and uh, good luck with the next few months. Thank you, Michael. Grant Brebner joining us there, the new head coach of the Melbourne Victory Football Club.